When you first start using Webflow, classes and selectors can be, well, sort of confusing. You have classes that are labeled blue and others that are labeled pink. Some classes have settings that are highlighted blue and others have settings that are highlighted orange. Classes that are inheriting from other classes and the next thing you know, you have a hundred different settings all coming out of the woodwork. To help ease the confusion, I want to go over classes and selectors in Webflow so that if you're just starting out, you'll have a better understanding of what is going on and why things are color coded the way that they are. So to start things off, I want to go over some of the basics of tags and classes. That way we're all at the same basic level of understanding as we move forward in the video. Now, if you're familiar with Webflow, you've probably seen tags and classes that look like this. You have elements that have the pink box and you have some elements that have the blue box. We've even seen instances where a blue box is paired with a green box. What this means is that if an element has a pink box around it, that is what is known as an HTML element tag. And that gives us a way of styling all the instances of that specific item or element all at once. So for example, if you're working on a style guide or even during the build of your project, if you see this pink box and it says all H1 headings, you can style all of the H1 headings in your project all at once. So all of the styles, font sizing is consistent. These blue boxes are for that specific class of element only. So for example, you can have multiple text blocks, but if they have different class names, it's not going to matter. It's only the, cla the class is only going to be affected that specific class. So for example, if I was to drop in a div block on this project, I have the option of selecting a class name that I'm already using in the project, or I can give it a new name. So I'll give it a new name of my div. And you'll notice I have a blue box that says my div. Anything I do to this div is only happening to the classes of my div. So I can have other divs in the project. If they don't have the class of my div, it's not going to matter. This is only, whatever I do here is only going to apply to my div. Next to my div, you'll see that there's a drop down menu that lets me choose different states. In CSS, these are known as pseudo classes. But Webflow, they call it states. And Webflow lets us style the four of the most commonly used. These are situations where an element is being hovered over, or if a link has been visited, or if something has been tabbed on the focus state. Now what this means is that if the element has a green box, we're only applying that style to that specific instance. So whatever I do in this situation will only happen when my div is being hovered by the user. As soon as I remove this, I can go back to styling the base default styling of my div. So to give you a practical example, here I am at the homepage of a real estate website, and I have a heading, I have a paragraph, I have a couple of buttons, and I have an image. Now the first thing I wanna show you is the body tag. If I have my body element selected, and in the selector, select the body all pages tag, you'll notice that it's inheriting zero selectors. That's because the body all pages tag is at the top of the hierarchy. Any typography styling you make to body all pages will cascade down. Now, even though it cascades down to the other elements, you won't always see it reflected. So let me show you an example. Right now, you'll see how font, size, and color have a blue highlight or a blue font color applied in the settings. This means that those settings are applied to this element. So if I was to select another element on my page, for example, my heading, and go to my all H1 headings, you'll see that we're inheriting one selector, but now the font is orange, but font weight, font size, line height, and color are blue. This means that those specific stylings that are blue are specific to the H1 headings. So even though it inherited something from the body all pages tag, there's more specific styling applied to all H1 headings. So in this case, the only thing that it inherited that is still visible is the font itself, so enter tight. Everything else has a more specific styling applied. Now if I was to go to one of these that are highlighted in blue, I could reset it and it will go back to inheriting from the parent. So if I was to reset the font weight, 
it goes back to 400. So I'll undo that. Now, I mentioned earlier that sometimes you'll want some of these HTML tags to have a specific style applied. Since this is a home page, theoretically, what if I wanted to make this home hero for the home page have a heading that's a little bit larger for more of a display heading look? I can give this one a new class and I can call it heading dash display. And now it's inheriting two selectors. It's inheriting from the body all pages, all of the H1 headings, and then what specific styling are applied to this. So you notice all of them are orange. That's because nothing has changed from all H1 headings from that pink box. If I was to make this one 5 rem, that box is now blue. And if I go and reset, it goes back to 3.5 and the text on size goes back to orange. So the thing to remember is typography styling cascades down unless there's specific styling applied to those elements. So to give you another example, I've made some edits to my hero section and now have the heading and paragraph aligned to the center. So if I was to go and select my heading and go to my all H1 headings, you'll notice that it's now inheriting two selectors, which is weird because before it was inheriting one. So what changed? Well, if I go to my selectors, you'll notice that it's inheriting from a div called text align center. And that's because typography settings cascade down to child elements. So if I see on my page, I have a div called text align center that is aligning text to the center. If I was to reset this and go back to my heading, go all H1 headings, it now goes back to inheriting from one selector. So even though it's a pink boxed item, it will still inherit from parent elements that are blue box items if there are typography settings applied. So I'll undo that, go back to center aligned. Now, finally, you'll notice I have two buttons on my page. I have this default button that's inheriting three selectors. So we have the button, and that's inheriting from all links, text align center, because the buttons are also a child of text align center, and then finally the body all pages tag. If I go to the button on the right hand side, which is the secondary button that has the combo class of his secondary, you'll notice that it's inheriting four selectors. It's inheriting from the button on the left, and then all of the same ones that the other button inherited, the links, text line center, and body all pages. That's because as you add combo class, you're adding inheritance. So if I was to add another combo class and say button is secondary and then give it an additional combo class of is small, it's now inheriting five selectors. So we're going up from the current specific styling of is small, back up to what was applied to is secondary, back up to what's applied to the button, all links, text align center, and then finally body all pages. In addition to your standard tags and classes, there's also another specific instance you need to be aware of, and that's when it comes to rich text. I have a div set up for where I wanted to put the rich text. So I'm going to go to my add element. And I'm going to add in a rich text. And you notice I have now rich text applied. All of these rich text elements are going to take the style of the standard version of those elements. So all H2, it'll take the, that styling. All paragraphs, it'll take the styling of my default paragraph. However, once I give this rich text a class name, so I'll give it a class name of my rich text as an example. And then I go in and select the H2 heading. I can go all H2 headings. And then I have the option of only applying styles to the H2 headings that are nested inside of my rich text. So let me show you what happens if I don't do this right now. Let me just drop in another H2 right above it. So I'm going to add in, I'm going to use the shortcut Control E, and I'm going to drop in a heading. And I'm going to make an H2, and I'm going to bring it to the top. 
and I'm going to select all H2. So this H2 heading is the standard, and then right here is where the rich text starts. If I was to change a style of my standard H2 and size up the size, you'll notice that it also applies to the rich text version. Now, similarly, if I'm on the rich text version of all H2s, and I don't nest it inside of my rich text, it'll also apply to both. The only time at which I will get an opportunity to only style the rich text version of H2s is when I nest it inside of the rich text element version. So I'll go ahead and select this, and now I can affect all H2s that are only in my rich text. So if I size this one up, you'll notice it's only affecting this H2. So there you go, a quick rundown of selectors and classes in Webflow. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.